Apple closed right on this yellow trend line that I have right here. And this is a very critical trend line, guys. If you look here on the daily chart, you can see if you scroll all the way back to the all time high we made back here in December of 2021, and you draw this trend line across the previous resistances that we found uh, based on previous bear market rallies in the market, you can see here we've had three key rejections off this same exact line. And not only was it just a normal rejection, it actually prompted a sell off to new lows after. Now, that doesn't mean that just because right now we're retesting it, it's going to go back to new lows. However, still, we know that this trend line is, first of all, a very hard resistance. Second of all, structurally, just based on Apple's price action in the past, we know that it tends to have not only just a hard rejection, but it also has exhibited a lot of downside afterwards. So it's not just like any trend line that may be a resistance for a couple days and then maybe it gets broken through after. We know that this tends to have a lot of sell pressure behind it, and we closed right on it today. Again, very critical, especially the close tomorrow. Remember, we are off on Friday in terms of trading because it is Good Friday. Uh, so there's only one more day left in the week. So very interested to see where the weekly candle closes on Thursday, especially if it does close below this line, because if that is the case, that could be early signs of a potential rejection off of this level. So first of all, risk reward, at least to the short side, is very good for Apple right now um, at 164-ish, uh, right around this level. Again, this same trend line has prompted a lot of sell pressure in the past. So it's no surprise to see it having a little bit of difficulty uh, the last couple days around here. And I'm looking for some form of confirmation, especially on the weekly candle, if we get it tomorrow, uh, to show that the candle is printing below Low the trend line because if you remember here, if you look at the weekly chart, we actually closed just a tad above this trend line last week. And this candle in itself from last week is actually very bullish. We had a demand zone previous supply zone, uh, but then it became a demand once we broke above. This zone prompted a large bounce in the weekly and had a very bullish close that closed right above the trend line that I'm referencing right now. So if we were to have a close below uh, based on this weekly candle for this week, that would show that sellers are stepping in. It actually would look very similar uh, to this structure from back here. We had a very bullish candle coming out of yet again, another form of the demand zone um, back here on the week of August 8th. And then we had a little bit of higher price discovery to wick right above uh, this trend line here. But the weekly was not able to close above, end up falling back, and then the following week engulfed all of this previous weekly candle from the August 8th week. And then after that, just continued to the downside uh, all the way to make a new low. Uh, so I'm looking for something at least similar. Again, does it mean it has to make a new low? No, but still, I would like to see a fairly hard rejection off of this line, especially if my thesis for the entire market is to play out. Apple is the largest weighting of both the S&P 500 as well as the NASDAQ. Uh, so again, if this does end up selling off, which is my expectation around these levels, then that can lead to a lot more downside for the overall market. So just wanted to make this clear, uh, share some insight on Apple because it's at a very critical juncture right now. So make sure to draw at least this trend line on your chart uh, and follow through with it. But another thing I do want to mention in today's video, uh, SPX, pretty choppy price action today. We did have a nice sell off to start the day, but then we did have this bounce later on in the day, uh, which actually was prompted from this yellow trend line right here, which if you remember from the Sunday video, um, as you can see over here, we do have this ascending pattern uh, that we were trading within until we broke out over here on March 31st. And we actually just retested that level today. So that's where the bounce came from. Obviously, that's not the only reason we bounce. There's many variables that play into price action, but I consider this to be the main variable of why we bounced where we did. As you saw from the 15 minute chart, if I just go back here really quick, we bounced right off of this level, I had some accumulation right around the range and then continued up higher after that. So make sure to also have this trend line in your chart because if we do fall below it, which I do suspect will be the case uh, between now and next week, if we do fall below this line, that would not only be a breakdown of a critical trend line that's acting as a support right now, but it also would be a fake breakout. And if you guys know, if you guys have been subscribed to the channel for a while, you know that fake breakouts are some of my favorite setups to trade because they tend to exhibit a lot of downside pressure whenever you have a fake breakout to the upside. Uh, for example, here we had this breakout over here. Uh, we had price discovery a lot higher after this initial squeeze, after we broke out of the trend line and this ascending pattern. Um, and then we fell back down to retest it. Again, very critical if it's not able to hold the retest and continue up higher and it falls back below into the pattern, uh, then almost always you see an aggressive leg down to retest the lower end of the previous channel or ascending pattern that you were within. Uh, so that just tends to be the case in terms of just a technical aspect. Again, a lot of other variables can play into it, but just based on a technical aspect, when you see a fake breakout to the upside and it falls back and it's not able to hold uh, the key trend line that it broke out of originally, like we saw over here, remember this was 
acting as a resistance at first, then be gapped up and then continued above. If it's not able to hold it on the retest, uh, then that shows a lot of weakness and you tend to see a lot more sell pressure, especially within the days following. So make sure to keep note of that. As of now, it's been a successful retest. Uh, so if you are bullish, this is a successful retest, but make sure that your risk is based on this trend line because if we fall below, uh, decisively at least, uh, then you will see a lot more sell pressure. So just keep that in mind. And some of you guys may be wondering what is this blue line here for Tuesday, April 11th. Uh, this is my next turn date, at least this next cycle that I have coming up. I've shared the 18 day cycle in the past, which actually I'll show you guys how these turn days work. Uh, pretty simple explanation here. Uh, but basically, this is the 18 day cycle. This is the one that I've publicly shared on this channel. Again, I have a lot of different cycles uh, to derive my turn dates from, but this is a basic version and it's been very successful in the past year, uh, literally a 100% accuracy throughout the bear market, which is very rare for a cycle, especially something as simple as this 18 day cycle. Uh, but for example, whichever way momentum is going into the turn date, you typically see a turn slash reversal out of that date. For example, over here, we had this specific day of March 13th. I shared on the Sunday video uh, that we had this specific date coming up on March 13th, and I expected that we would have some form of a reversal off of it. So therefore, I ended up hedging and added calls for a bounce because also it ended up being a convergence with this gray line right here, which is the downward trend line that goes all the way up to all time highs for SPY. Uh, so we had a very nice convergence of a support here, as well as this reversal day. We went down into it. So the momentum was down into the reversal day. So it makes it a higher probability that you have a bounce out of that. In this case, we ended up bouncing on the exact turn day of uh, March 13th. That was the Monday and continued up even higher. Now, we went a lot higher than I suspected we would, but still the principle remains the same. And now we are approaching actually another one, which is on Thursday. And here's what I am looking for just based on the structure that we're in right now in terms of the overall market, as well as the turn date structure. Because remember, I have, if you look back over here on SPX, I have the one that is on Tuesday, and then also the 18 day cycle is tomorrow on Thursday. So I am looking for here is a potential reversal starting tomorrow. And this will be a small form of a reversal uh, to the upside if this is to be the case. Ideally, there will be some form of chop. It's not something that's supposed to just squeeze all the way up. Uh, but then leading into Tuesday of next week, after we have that chop, slash up price action, uh, which is only two trading days, it would be Thursday and Monday, uh, leading into that Tuesday date, then we would have a reversal to the downside. Uh, now I must also note April 12th, which is next Wednesday, if you look over to right here, is CPI. So there's a potential that we have pretty stagnant price action, especially after tomorrow, uh, leading up into that Wednesday date. If we are going up into the Wednesday date, there is a very likely scenario where we have a sell-off after that CPI print. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Again, you can't predict with 100% accuracy what this will be, but if momentum is leading up into next Wednesday uh, for that CPI print, we have a key reversal date like I just shared with you here um, on that Tuesday. Remember, it is plus or minus one day. And of course, if CPI falls within that time span, uh, then that likely will be the catalyst for a reversal. Uh, so just keep this in mind going into next week. I know it can kind of be confusing when there's two reversal dates uh, back to back. Funny enough, I actually have another one on Wednesday uh, for another one of my cycles. So Tuesday and Wednesday, very critical time period. Uh, so most definitely CPI will be the catalyst for a from a reversal. Uh, but just keep this in mind. We have one tomorrow, a uh, potential for some form of a minor bottom with chop slash up price action into next week for a Tuesday or Wednesday reversal, which I suspect will be to the downside. So uh, keep that in mind. We are still within this head and shoulders pattern, as you can see from up here and still within the major pennant formation, these two yellow lines. And if you made it long, enough through the video. I did say earlier that I wouldn't share how I derived this specific cycle. If you actually look closer, you could probably uh, figure out how long each cycle was apart, but I'd like to reward any of you that did uh, continue to watch the video. Uh, so just a simple ruler tool that you can see from right here and drag it across to the next one. This is a 37 day cycle. I probably won't be sharing many more of my cycles um, after this, especially because I shared the 18 day one. If more and more people understand them, uh, know about these cycles, then they can become more and more public and they will cease to work. Uh, so you have to be careful with that, but thought I'd reward you guys with this one. Uh, this is a 37 day cycle, very consistent. If you look at previous price action, um, you can see over here, it marked this bottom before a major squeeze. Uh, for example, over here, marked the high before a sell off afterwards. Typically the base scenario of these reversals is about three or more days. Um, so once you hit around that three day range, then you can see price action go whatever way after, but still it's pretty consistent for a three day reversal. Um, so as you can see through all these, this started the sell off uh, last time. So very key next Tuesday slash Wednesday is remember I have two reversal dates converging between those two days. We are likely to see some form of a large reversal um, at that time. So just keep that in mind and let's try to keep this cycle uh, under the radar. So uh, if you look over here for one last thing, if you look at the cheddar flow application and at the dark pool 
levels. Something that I've been talking about recently and something that I want to see is dark pool distribution. Unfortunately, I haven't been seeing that much distribution. We only had 932 million in premium at the 408.69 level today. So again, didn't even make it over a billion, not very much. If you look back to yesterday, it was pretty much the same exact thing, 938 million at the 411 level. So again, not that much in terms of overall premium. And of course, Monday, if you look back to that day, uh, we literally only had 513 million at the 410 level. So very, very light prints. I'd like to be seeing a lot more in terms of larger amounts of premium. Uh, just that would show a lot of distribution by the whales, especially after, if you look at Spice Chart here, we saw a ton of 3 billion plus, 2 billion plus prints around the 385 to low 390 range. So there was most definitely a lot of buying uh, via the dark pools down here around this retest of the downward trend line. And so far, we just haven't been seeing that much selling. So it certainly can come, especially within the next couple of days. And that probably would be the case, especially if we have that upward slash chop price action into my reversal date next week. Uh, but just keep this in mind overall, because last time that we did make a local high uh, for a bit from back here, if you remember the 415.22 and 416, uh, roughly 70-ish level, uh, both of these were 3 billion plus prints, and they most definitely ended up being sells. I was talking about this uh, being potential distribution distribution back when we were at these levels and we had a major sell afterwards. And then we had a lot of the larger prints down here and I actually talked about it being accumulation and then we ended up flying even further than I thought. But still, I'd like to see uh, that form of distribution, especially within the next week uh, for potential sell off afterwards. But other than that though, appreciate you guys watching the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, my analysis as well as these cycles and uh, we'll see you guys next time on Sunday.